thank you um, for showing all as usual. Um, it's good to have all of you here. We have an obligation to ourselves, to our employees, and to you to ensure that this environment in which we are all assembling that every time is conducive. I have said, and I'm on record with my team, that the condition of this place called the Ministry of Information is acceptable. And our commitment is to change what our situation is. Um, it's a process that is on, and for the record, anybody can tell that we have not been able to spend any government money here since we took it. Uh, just yesterday, I was very angry with some of my financial people because I realized uh, all the ministries and agencies, uh, their team have been doing what they can do for them to have some operational resources. Our people did not do that. So we have been able to spend a ton of government money. Everything you see or do here is the result of the relationship we built in the past. Um, we're not just to change the entire building, which will take a little bit of time, but we are focused on changing this environment so that every time you come here, you are much more comfortable. Uh, I have some assurances that there will be real change in here uh, in the very short run. We do not have an extended guest today, but we have a number of things to talk about, very important things. And the first one I want to start with because it's serious in my mind and it has a lot of implications for the country is what is unfolding for the EPS. The EPS is the Executive Protection Service. It is an elite presidential unit charged with the responsibility of protecting the president and all of the VIPs that may be designated by the president. Even me, as the Minister of Government, cannot have an EPS officer assigned to me until it is authorized by the president. When the Saliba administration ended, the strength of the EPS was around 400. The new administration started in 2018. Between 2018 to where we are, that strength doubled. And that doubling took the size of the EPS <clears throat> to over 800. When the new administration took over, headed by Mr. Gay, they inherited a situation that they deemed was very concerning. Not only the size, not only that the size of the EPS has doubled, but they were concerned about some of the qualities of the individuals who were within the EPS. They found out a number of issues. First of all, the law that created the EPS makes the EPS the property of the state. And the requirements for investment are clear. And I will leave some for you. You must be a Nigerian citizen. You must be aged between 18 to 35. You must be a high school graduate or above. And for those who are civilian employees who do not meet those require them, 
must possess some technical and specialized skills that are considered beneficial to the people. So, for example, if you wanted a controller, and the person is not uh, a power security person, it must be determined that his skill will help and will be a benefit to the EPS. They must be effective with background investigation. They must undergo medical examination to determine clean bill of health before training. And then they should undergo six months of training at the police academy. These are requirements. So, once the new team took over, they, based on the astronomical growth of the EPS, over 800, they had to determine if all of the enrollments or investments were consistent with these requirements. When they checked that, they found out a number of issues. Among them, there was a good chunk who did not meet that bare requirement of the high school graduates. There were some who claimed that they were high school graduates who presented their certificates. Those certificates were investigated and some were fake. Some also present a wise certificate which following investigation was also determined to be fake. Some claim they graduated from certain many institutions, contact with those institutions, confirm that they did not enroll at those entities. So in the briefing I'm giving you, I might imagine that I am the spokesperson for the government. And if there are issues involving this, my responsibility to reach out to the sector, to ask them what's happening. Because I am not being concerned about anything that is happening in the government. And this explanation I'm giving is not to render judgment. Because anybody who is offended has a recourse. So I've heard some of the EPS officers complain that they, uh, this place is illegal. They could be right, I don't know. The only people who can determine whether their concerns are correct or incorrect is the court of law. And so they have every right to follow the processes that are laid down to challenge uh, what has happened to them. So what we try to give you on behalf of the government to the account of those in charge of the EPS. So as a result of that, what they have done is to determine that a number of them who did not meet those requirements could not stay for in the EPS. And that number is over 200. I've heard different accounts of 200 people in this place. But one of the things that was of concern, I believe, many of you who are pressed before saw that, was that there was an appearance of some of the officers at uh, one of our local radio stations. And during that live appearance, one of the person who is supposed to be an EPS person who was affected by this exercise. If you witness that all of you, I just saw you. He said, there were 300. And all the 300 people were armed. They will resist. They will take down people who come in their way. Open threats. Police intervened. There were initial resistance, but they were arrested. They've been in police custody uh, because some of the threats that they made were grave. 
And here's what the EPS authorities said. First of all, EPS officers don't get loosely carried on to give them drugs to keep it, whether it's their house, whether it's in airway, no. Drugs are for operational purposes. When you are on operational assignment, when you are into a gun, you don't take the gun away anywhere you go when you are on operational assignment. So for them to claim that they had guns in their hands, the guns remained in their hands and they were dismissed, nobody who has common sense will do that. It's not going to mention the head of a security group that is responsible for presidential security. And if the action of that very individual I'm talking about on that talk show if the measurement of who an EPS officer should be, then you understand that maybe the director was right. How can somebody who made those kinds of threats be anywhere around the president or even the admin? Security people are trained to be very well about it. I know there are some of them who are very trained as such. There are still a group of them who go gone to the legislature to raise their fees. That's what level headed people will do. But when you issue formal tax, like some of the folks did, then there's a problem. So the EPA has said these requirements that are laid down, the over 400 people who were enlisted between 2018 to 2023, many of them did not vote because the entire requirement for enlistment was suspended. And requirements that are laid down by law for a security group that protects the president and all the VIPs and not be waived cannot be suspended. So if those were what happened, and others are in charge and they realize that those are the things that happen, of course it is normal that they will begin to take some of the action for that taking. Notwithstanding, I will repeat again. All of those caught in this situation who feel offended are encouraged to take recourse on the law and not issuing some of the threats that the government made. Yesterday, something important happened. Uh, one of the things we said is that it's a period of rebranding for Liberia. We've got to rebrand Liberia. Of global business. So yesterday we had the SH Liga, which is a British cruise line, coming here. It's not just that a cruise line was coming, that's not the main story. The story is over 150 tourists saw our country as a destination for tourism. And they came here. They came from different countries. Australians, Austrians, Chinese, French, Germans, Greeks, and Russians. They're all part of the over 115 tourists who came here. I was there along with my team of ministers to welcome them to our country. They were made to disembark. They went to Providence Island. They went to our museum. They went up to Uh They ended in a very frustrated situation at the, in the Petition Park, where people selling different products, cultural and, and others, ways. And the tourists happily interacted with them. There were purchases. But here was the main, one of the main messages for me. When I got to the place, I met the captain of the British cruise line. And he said, whenever you take your team to a country, one of the things to look forward to is to recruit the people who work on cruise ships from those countries because they believe in diversity. 
and there was their desire to recruit people from Nigeria. We were not prepared for that. So one of the things he said to me, and that we need a whole discussion around, is that we have to find a way either uh, to establish an institution or empower existing institutions to do so, so that we train people how to work on cruise ship. And want to train those people they are qualified, then whenever they are just and they possibly they come back in one year, that's what he said. And his humble appeal to me is that we take those actions so that by the next time they come back after one year, they should be able to have some folks recruited from our country to work on cruise ship. And as a sector ministry responsible for tourism, we are going to take that policy action with the central government to work towards that area because it will be an opportunity for job creation in our country. The Africa sub tour that is supposed to happen one month, exactly one month from now, will be a lot of tourist attraction in the area. But the organizers are having some challenges, and I assure them I'm going to talk about the ADA. As a ministry, as a government, to give approbation to what they want to do. Uh, they have an authorization letter signed by me, the Minister of Youth and Sports, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, which basically indicate that the government is in the know of what they're doing, we approve of it, and we call on all of our people and those doing business here to support that humble cause. The feedback we've gotten from them is that that much <clears throat> is being done to support them. There will be one option. If they don't have what it takes to host the competition exactly one month from now, they will be constrained to cancel. That's not what we want for our country because this is the first ever in the history of the country that will have a sporting competition here. So I want to take this opportunity to appeal to investors and the business community, even public officials ourselves and contribute towards making that entire uh, intervention a success. So this is my humble appeal to begin with us who work in government, in our private sector people, business people, investors, let's rally around the organizers of the suffering competition so that exactly one month from now we can do that in Grand Cape because it's international, the athletes who are supposed to participate are coming from different countries. And we will give some attention to Nigeria. It will be the focus of more tourists coming here. And it will be good for our country. So that's my whole appeal. But as it stands until such action is taken, it is scheduled to take place as of now. But let's do a little bit more to rally around them because what they're doing is for the good of our country. The president was in uh, Roaming over the weekend and he had a retreat with uh, Senate representatives who are from our appendix. And the only reason why I'm talking about it is that we've seen some newspaper publication that the president is now opting for bringing Liberia over the United Liberia. This is governance. Even in America, everywhere in the world, where political parties exist, and those parties have representation in parliament or in Congress or in the legislature. When did it become a problem or a crime that a sitting president who has lawmakers on his party can sit and sit and talk about how we support each other? In America, even Republicans can be. Democrats do that. In the British Parliament, in other places, they do so. That's the reason why the president did not do so in, in, in secret. That's why it was a public event. It is the right of the president to call lawmakers from the table, to acquaint them with 
his own friends and, and, in, and, and in John upon them for their support. And when we make everything political, that even if a president meets his full of people, then that means the president wants to turn the country over and bring Liberia. So what happened to the other branches of government? Don't we have a to people that is one of the most important branches of government in their land of position? Don't we have an independent judiciary? Because there are three branches. So a president meeting lawmakers for the political party cannot be interpreted as an attempt to make the country a green, quote unquote, green idea. It's not our friends in the media to stop doing these things. Let's focus on very substantive issues and not trying to police our other things. Even as that is happening, we know that in the first quarter of the, of the year, it has been said that. Revenue collection improved, and not only that, they improved, but they poor perform in the form of additional 18 billion. So, what was projected to have been raised during the first quarter of this current fiscal year will perform in a term of additional 18 billion. And I was just talking to the Minister of the Food Company as a soul. Okay, we see the 18 million, which is supposed to be the, the excess. But in our first quarter, what it is? And it will go up under the 50 million in just one quarter. And by their projection, they report that the, the revenue collection uh, picture over the form in excess 18 million, which is good for our country. And we hope that we can continue. That trajectory so that at the end of the process, I will come back to an old story that a lot of you know, which has to do with the budget shortfall. Probably we will not have one. Rules. One of the fundamental pleasures of the president, as he was planning for a hundred day variables, was that he would make the country accessible. Yeah, in other words, he said no car was there, he was stopping the market, which is why many people run there. But basically, what he was saying is the country must be accessible. Most of you who are journalists, you see what happens to people who travel to the southeast and other places. Sometimes they get stuck on the road for weeks, for days. I announced here the other day that one of the things that the government has resolved to do is that we will reopen all of the maintenance stations in all the 15 counties. Uh, the intention is to deploy more than between 300 or 400 technology equipment. But while we are yet to do that, the government is keeping that thing. And we follow it, whether it's towards Mofa, whether it's in Lima moving towards the southeast, whether it's in Mombasa moving towards the river steps. Everywhere we're making the roads possible. And as a result, we've heard some of our friends from the opposition saying they should call the government to stay with government. Of course, when you fail, you will say, okay, you see, you made a full pass. Nobody promised that you pay all the roads in the country in three months. What they say is that the roads will be passable. And how can you even attempt to call the party that is in power? And they started the whole concept of making our roads uh, to be paid. We have that history. We will repeat that history during this time. But while we seek to do so, we show that through those interventions, our roles will be big. So you see part of the constraint. I, yeah, I don't, now, it's good for people to experience what it is. So we talk in it, they can say, hmm. In every ministry or agency, if you have a generator, right? So the way the current bonds, then we'll put the generator on. The ministry will inherit that, you get one. So we're current one now. Those souls are inherited. Yeah. And I'm glad you're experiencing it. You're right in the middle of it. You see it. So with the strong the ministry will really do, you know, we're not playing politics. 
It's serious. How can any serious government institution run this way? You have defended LAC when LAC team my current gone, then nothing can happen. Who brought some place like that? But this is place all you people been coming for the last six years. This is a place they sent us. This is a place we are determined to change. You have to see, the way the current going, you're not on here, right? You stay on? Okay, stay on. <laughs> so, so that's part of the challenge. It's good that you've seen this challenge with your own eyes. So many things have been done here. And sometimes they look painful. But some of the very actors who left our country this way, they want to talk more than everybody else. And they bring the ten one radio station out here and making noise. Some of them who are implicated in all kinds of things. Some of them who are not ashamed to even be referred to as sanctioned officials. That was the talk. Where in the history of our country so much, so much number of government officials would be sanctioned by authority? And if you need to look at a category, then you make it the largest of laws, practically everything. And you're talking about government supposed to be for the interest of the poor. But the current government is not paying attention to the poor. When is this? When last you guys? How many poor people lives you change now? The dumb people are the executive mansion. You have all the opportunity to process them to be civil servants. You didn't do it. You hang them somewhere, call it there, supplementary, payroll employee. Meanwhile, they put it rough on their churches, on their social closet, on their families. They process them overnight as civil servants. Those who are not so connected to them say you supplementary work. When you supplementary, it means you have no power. Now you flow. You left those people vulnerable. But they still have voices to talk. You can't really make yourself that way. The wounds are still fresh. People can still remember what was done to this country. And standing right in the auditorium, I too feel it now what was done to this country. Because when I was here as a deputy minister and acting minister, oh yeah, the generator was there. In fact, to use the most time. If they were still in those era right now, I'll tell you see it's when the generator will be gone. You inherited that and I was working. This is how you left it. Just a small picture of the bigger picture you left the country. They got boys to talk. The last time I made reference that the president's attention had been drawn to the situation was the LDEA, that he was going to take charge. The president often did meet with two individuals involved. And the assurance we have is whatever you've been seeing in the book, I've been transmitting into the newspapers and radio station will not be repeated because there's a clear, clear, clear communication from the president to not just them, but all of us, that if we are not focused on doing the work for which we are deployed and using the time for infighting, in that way, We knew this country was somewhere it should not be. So we purposefully chose the mantra that we came to rescue. And anything that stands in the way of that rescue effort will be removed. Now that the president has met with them, we look forward to seeing the LDEA focused on what the National emergency plans will come to pass as well. And so, for such a major challenge to the country, the individuals who have been put in charge, it is anticipated that they will do what will enhance the overall mission of the administration. There were robots, I would like to describe it, that there were drugs found in the presidential convoy at the RIA. I just want to 
say on behalf of the government that those information might be correct. So such thing happened. If it took place anywhere that in that period, maybe it's not our country. For nine years. And I don't want to waste time on that just to say this information. So talk forcefully. That has no bearing on people. I've seen uh, the different issues I wanted to talk about. Do you 
So, Lord Chief, the President met with Mark Nichols from the from the UP Alliance. The fellow who asked about the reason for his mission. I listed the number of uh, requirements that one should need to be enrolled in the BPS. Each of them should be met fully. That's what the law says. But since you're focused on the definition, let me just ask you this question. If you are the president for a university, the requirement for anybody to enter a university is that you must wear a mask certificate. And after an enrollment period, you find out you got more than 100 students in your university who do not have high school graduation people. What will you do? Keep them there? Of course, the requirement to be a college student is that you should have a high school. So if you bypass the system and you are enrolled, and eventually form out that you're not a high school graduate, are you suggesting you will just leave the person that you're already in the college system? So the EPS has set a requirement for this one. The head of the EPS or the team at the EPS has determined a specific number of persons, some of them lie, but if you get a few better fit, some of the data that they didn't have. In fact, one of the things they said to me is that some of these people already knowing that they were in brief walk away by themselves already. That goes on one of the big consensus. Who knew that okay, we didn't do the right thing, but they just walk away. So all they're trying to do is to do the right thing. But maybe the EPS people who put in a case and have a case. And I'm not dismissing their case. All I'm saying, if you have a case, if you believe the action being taken against you is wrongful action, if you think the action being taken against you is illegal, it's not the run of country, it's a recall to the law. That's what I'm saying. So what I have done here is to give you an account of what the EPSC is the situation. They have their own account. They did their same thing. But there's a recall under the law that they can utilize solve the problem. Somebody asked what the EPS was distribution. The last time I checked, people don't get enrolled in the security sector on financing basis. And the first requirement I read for the EPS says the person should be a Liberian citizen. That's what I said. So when you're being recruited, even in the civil service where we, I mean, where many of the people are, the questions they have to answer in the form that they fill all these things before they can process their pain, all these kind of things. Nothing there acts about your political party. It has to be whether you are a Liberian. And you cannot politicize a security group to, 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 to find UPs, exhibition, you know, for ASC. You don't find the membership in the security sector on partisan basis. That's the reason why we remember during the election when President Riyadh who had the first match, and there was this EPS officer who was visibly dressed in the paraphernalia of the CDC, and happened to right before the eyes of the president. In fact, it's the president he was escorting, and he saw this person dressed in the party's CDC, and it was okay for them. It is those kinds of SSCs that are being addressed now. Of that, I want a security question, especially somebody who is responsible for presidential security. That's the reason why, when leadership is king, you see the EPS officer. I, I'm around the president most of the time. And some of the EPS people I see in the diamond are the same EPS officers who are around President Yeah, Nobody chasing their own. Because their role is there to protect the president. It doesn't matter who that president is. He wants to enter the executive mansion. Yes. 
the amount of money needed for the after tools. So when I spoke to the organizers, one of the things you says is that they still need around hundred thousand and they collected fifteen thousand. So if you add two amount, then they are suggesting they need a hundred and fifteen thousand for the country. Which reasonably that's small money, right? For a whole country hosting an international tournament. So all we say, we just want to encourage people to take interest. And I'm not just calling on people apart from ourselves. If you are government official, you're going to put your eye and give it for $1,000. The federal government official is getting $1,000, you have $50,000. By the time they start announcing that, the private sector people will get more to pay them to get the government to succeed. So I'm going to ask you a question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, the, the president plan to make that uh, outside of oh, yes. the information Thank ministry. You. I remember. So, yes, there's a plan of the president, and that plan has my confirmation because if you follow my confirmation here, I said the idea was good. So, the president has a set of legislative agenda. And the first three that they we have, they have concluded on to be submitted for action. Number one among them is the bill to establish the National Tourism Authority. It's number one, one of the three that they, they want to try to test with that right now. Uh, so hoping that they keep that schedule and they do so. At the end of the year, we have the National Tourism Authority established. What could take a little bit beyond when but there's one thing to just pass the law that they establish in the entity. It's another thing altogether to But it's something that we're very committed to because even me as a minister of the convention, I don't believe that with everything we got to do, focus on communication, and then we call the USA, it's supposed to be very good. It's a big sector. The sector works videos of that. And when we get it right, we can make a lot in terms of revenue generation. I made an example here, you know, the Gambia. I don't know how many of you are known, Gambia is a very small street. Almost everything is built on uh, Senegal. On what they operate on, what they live on, what makes that country great. It's just it's not only natural resources, it's just uh, we are even more in doubt than Ghana in terms of touristic sites, what they make people to get excited. And maybe they didn't even find war. People are coming from all over those days, you come to UL, not a professor never asked for Sebastian from Ghana to Nigeria. Foreign over here in their number. So tourism would have been better in the Indian Prime War. One of the things that took us last war is to have used techniques to kill ourselves. So all we are trying to do is to rebrand the image of the country, to sell the image of the country once more. And all are happy to do it. The cruise ship you saw was not the initiative of the government to the Minister of Information, even though we the second ministry. It was an intervention from the Latvian National Tourism Association where uh, my name is the head. I think the work of a group called what? This is Nigeria or History that or something. But they are a part of the association, so normally we just give the credit to the association and talk to the government. So I didn't try to find them. They took that initiative to bring a British cruise line here. We would have wanted to do tourism work. Even as challenged as we are, we would have agreed to come. They left the ship, they didn't stay on the ship. They wanted to see the country they come from. They wanted to see how they feel now. They wanted to see the first talk about what they didn't have. Those are places we are very different. But imagine what would have happened if you told them to pack up. What would have happened if you told them in in Grand Cape or where we're taking the shopping competition to see the beautiful day and all the experience along that route. So yes, to answer your question, the plan is well on course. Tourism and culture, nobody will be detached from this ministry. 
This ministry will reveal the ministry of information, culture, affairs, and tourism. Uh, the devil who asked about the money for the thing, you want to say you want to worry about assets and clear air. So while everything you comes to the press conference, you want to have many people now to clear the assets and clear air. You just kind of press me, get out, but you do this, you know, you target to me, yeah? <laughs> Don't worry about it. I said, I, I told you, I shall be declared and I will be committed to that. Yeah? <laughs> I told a public thing. My wife and my children just told me the law is required, I'm not doing it, so I will not publish it, but I will declare it. Because it's our families, right? And we want to respect the law. If the law says clear and public, but your family, man, you will say one thing, you say, okay, I'll be a different man, that's why I will publish Web casting, why you want to have a boat injured and want all the people? The law says the flag, it's a problem, why you want to cross it? You know, and the Bible says when you take a wife, you are no longer two, but one. Wow. So I can't do this with my wife, so I agree with her. That's all the question answer? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 One of the things I told people when I took over this place or when I was in the process of even over improving my proclamation here is that I'm not here for propaganda. I'm in a qualified man one of the best propagandists in the country. But I also realized that if the ministry of information is not a place for propaganda, so I will not be propaganda. And I will not lie. So I just saw the release myself yesterday. And I followed all the views. On the different talk show talking about what are you Nigerian or is the Galis? I brought some people ask questions why his contribution or history in the field of sports and all the different things they've said. So I have a schedule to the executive manager right after the press conference. And I will endeavor to have answers to those things that I brought on there. And this is not what I will hear when I come back here on Thursday. But they will ask questions in their phones. Right? So, I don't have the answer for now. That's what, that's what I'm saying in short. But you can be a show that because I will see the executive mansion today. We'll come back here on Thursday. I'll have an answer for you. So, uh,